everyone, and welcome to the 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. session of the 2017 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC17. This session, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called Virtual Worlds Database, Connect with the Metaverse. And our speakers today are Elise Donovan-Jones, Valerie Hill, and Marie Vans. Elise Donovan-Jones is an MLIS student at San Jose State University's School of Information. Her concentrations are in archives, digital curation, and virtual worlds. Donovan Jones is also Vice President of the Community Virtual Library, a member of the SJSU iSchool Special Libraries Association Student Chapter and Student Leadership <laughs> Representative for the Virtual Center for Archives and Records Administration Student Group. Valerie Hill, President of the Community Virtual Library, received a PhD in Library and Information Science in 2012. Formerly a school librarian, Dr. Hill is a library and information science educator with a research focus on the intersection of information literacy and global digital participatory culture. Marie Vams is a senior research scientist at Hewlett Packard Labs working on in HP's print adjacencies and 3D lab. She is an author of over 50 technical papers and holder of 24 U.S. patents. She received her Ph.D. in computer science from Colorado State University and more recently her MLIS from San Jose State University. Her in-world interests include the use of virtual worlds for distance education. Welcome all. Let's begin the session. Welcome everyone. I'm Valerie Hill. I'll be speaking first. I'm president of the Community Virtual Library, a virtual world library in Second Life, Kitely, Cyber Lounge, and coming soon to other hypergrid locations. Along with my colleague, colleagues, Elise Donovan Jones and Marie Vance, I'll be sharing our goal to connect resources and communities in our presentation today. Virtual Worlds Database, connect with the metaverse. Our main virtual world library branch of the Community Virtual Library is located in Second Life and is moving next month to library land on Cookie Island. We'll have a grand opening with tours of our main library, exhibit areas, art gallery space, and more. Lib librarians have been working in Second Life and have been exploring other virtual worlds for over a decade now. Our goal is to promote virtual worlds for education and for other fields through highlighting high quality immersive simulations and through networking with communities. As a project of New Media Arts Incorporated, the Community Virtual um, Library's website can be found at communityvirtuallibrary.wordpress.com. Our mission statement is, the Community Virtual Library is the hub that connects digital citizens in virtual worlds with the information and resources they seek. Explore that site and you'll learn more about connecting with the Community Virtual Library, promoting excellent virtual world resources, and learning how to partner with us to share your work in virtual world spaces. After a decade of virtual world librarianship, we are learning what information needs can best be served in a virtual world. We ask ourselves, what can we offer virtually that can't be delivered physically to library and information seeking individuals? We have found that virtual worlds offer live global connectivity with a sense of presence that goes beyond a chat screen. Librarians can help with navigation of information landscapes 
and with evaluation of content in all formats. Virtual world librarians can provide creative programming and can advocate for digital citizenship, which is currently an essential set of skills for everyone in digital culture. I mentioned that our main branch is in Second Life. However, we're exploring numerous other grids and networking with hypergrid experts with the goal of helping people find information across the metaverse. Recently, we toured a hypergrid train station with the Rockcliffe Virtual World Librarian in Avicon. Our goal in Kitely is to provide a hypergrid library and a digital citizenship museum, which Marie is going to tell you about. Reference services and librarianship in virtual worlds is very similar to working in a physical library. Yet we've discovered after several years that sitting at a virtual desk waiting for patrons to come in can actually be an isolating and lonely experience. Instead, librarians in virtual spaces are not limited to sitting at a desk. We can embed ourselves in communities to help connect people. People are what make virtual worlds real places. Not the simulations, although some of the simulations are amazing. Only through connecting people and communities can real learning take place in virtual worlds. So, people interested in science and medicine or in art and literature, whatever subject, they need help finding communities across grids. To that end, the Community Virtual Library has begun a virtual world database, and it's our hope that others will share this database and will add content. Both high quality immersive learning spaces and communities can be found in this searchable online database as real resources shared by real librarians. And Elise is going to explain that. Thanks, Val. Uh, let me go ahead and get myself together. Uh, hi, I'm Elise Donovan Jones. I'm an MLIS student at San Jose State University School of Information. Um, so I'll be speaking about the Virtual Worlds database. And um, basically, it is CVL's effort to connect virtual world communities outside of virtual worlds, as well as inside. Um, and it's also how we hope to connect non virtual world users to our resources. Uh, so educational communities like CVL provide spaces and resources within virtual worlds like Second Life and OpenSim um, for learners, educators, and information professionals. So the database began when Val came to Marie and me and asked if we knew of a free, non-coding, secure platform that CVL might use to create a database. Uh, the database would categorize, describe, preserve, and make virtual world communities more publicly accessible. As a result, I worked with three other iSchool MLIS students as part of a class for digital curation uh, in order to identify a platform for the database as well as identify other helpful information like which categories to use. So the image on this slide is a snapshot of the database which is now live and the virtual world communities collection is currently accepting entries. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in the links for those. And I will mention we do also have the links to those up at our uh, gazebo exhibit for everyone. Okay, so why are we trying to catalog virtual worlds? Well, documenting virtual worlds is important so that future generations know what information professionals and educators have accomplished with virtual worlds. Uh, it's especially important because virtual worlds are ever changing. And once a simulation disappears, it's difficult, if not impossible, to find traces of it. There's also a lack of in-world tools for searching simulations and communities that currently exist. So users often have to already know the exact name of the community uh, if they want to find it, and searching based on a single term doesn't guarantee the user will find a relevant, safe community for their needs. 
There have been other attempts, some more and some less successful than others in the past. Uh, to our knowledge, though, no other searchable database has been published to date, especially with the intent of connecting and documenting educational communities as resources, which is the case with our virtual world communities collection that's part of our database. Additionally, most other attempts are in the form of lists and spreadsheets created by individuals or communities with the entries not shared or collaborated on publicly or uh, without a long-term plan for create curation. So most communities have in-world collections of landmarks, um, but the collections there are usually only browse only. A user can't search a wall of images. They really can only browse. Uh, and there are many commercial and individual blogs, wikis, and websites that host a really cool best of um, uh, websites and collections uh, that are spotlighted. Uh, and they're often geared though towards very specific audiences, maybe business or maybe towards a specific world like Second Life uh, or Open Sim. Uh, and they don't really attempt to document or preserve the information. Usually once something is no longer popular, it'll be replaced with something that is popular. The virtual world communities collection in the virtual worlds database allows users to search and browse past and active virtual communities from online regardless of whether they've ever set foot in a virtual world and our hope is that it will inspire partnerships increase virtual world participation in educational and information communities and contribute to the documentation of virtual worlds Sorry, I was trying to get my, my slide correct there. So I've mentioned the database is active and I'd like to take a little time to discuss its current progress. The virtual worlds database consists of two collections, the virtual world communities uh, and virtual worlds landmarks collection. The Landmarks collection was informed by CVL's Landmark Spreadsheet, which was a list uh, created and collected uh, and put together by Val. Uh, we aren't currently adding to it, but we will continue to curate the collection and we might build onto it in the future. The Virtual World Communities Collection is our current focus and it's the inspiration for building the database. Uh, but what's the difference between communities and landmarks? Well, landmarks represent a specific space or object. So, for example, CVL's main library building or its hypergrid resource center would both be considered landmarks, whereas communities can span many spaces and are mo uh, they're more activity and citizens of citizen focused. Uh, communities are less tangible. They host book discussions, conferences, parties, things like that. And they often use landmarks as meeting spaces, but they aren't necessarily tied to one spot. We anticipate the database will evolve as we build our current collections and acquire more. Right now, we're focused on building the Virtual World Communities Collection and maintaining and improving the Virtual World Landmarks Collection. But in the future, we would like to interlink collections. For example, perhaps linking CVL's main library landmark entry to the entry in the, the um, other collection for CVL, um, just their overall community landmark. Other collections we might consider for the database in the future might be an archives for retired communities, projects and sims, biographies of important figures in virtual worlds, images and machinima, published virtual worlds research, and virtual world conferences like this one. Those would all be amazing. Okay, so if building and maintaining the Virtual Worlds database sounds like a lot of work, you are right. Uh, we need all the help that we can get. Uh, this slide lists some of the volunteer positions and tasks that we need help with. Uh, fact checking might appeal to the investigators among us. Uh, we need folks willing to visit communities and reach out to community leaders to make sure the information in the database is as accurate as possible. And if you have cataloging or database entry experience, we're looking for a few people to help add entries to the database. Uh, this would require a little bit more of a commitment and a free Airtable account so that we can give you permission to edit the database. Uh, Airtable being the platform that is hosting the database right now.
Uh, we'd also like to create or locate a virtual world's glossary to advise the database and its users. Um, and it would require knowledge of controlled vocabularies and their applications, if there's anyone uh, that has that sort of experience. Uh, we also need someone to investigate integrating the database into CVL's website. That would make it a lot easier for people to find and use. Um, and uh, backups are another thing that we'd like to do. They're very important for migration, uh, especially if we decide to stop using Airtable in the future or it becomes um, less, we just aren't able to use it for some reason. We do currently have backup spreadsheets of the database, so we do have some backups right now, but encoding the spreadsheet in a language like XML would be very helpful if we wanted to integrate the database into HTML or if we wanted to, to migrate it in the future. Um, so there are a lot of database platforms out there. Um, unfortunately, many are very costly or they require extensive coding or other backend experience. So something else that we would love to find are people that uh, just some uh, long term IT volunteers interested in providing IT support and implementation implementations for CVL, maybe someone that can help advise us on that side of things. And if you're not able to commit as a specialized volunteer, there are lots of other ways that you can help us out. Uh, take a moment to enter your favorite community or perhaps communities, um, if you belong to quite a few or if you know of quite a few, into our Google form. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll paste the link for that again. It is also on this slide, but that way everyone has it. Um, you can also check out the database and uh, let us know if you have any issues. Uh, is there something that's really confusing? Is something missing or incorrect? Uh, you can share the database link with others and recommend the database to colleagues interested in learning more about virtual worlds. Um, and you can use the database for yourself. Uh, browse to see what's out there or maybe look for specific types of communities. There's lots of different ways to search the database uh, and to browse it as well and to narrow down categories categories. Um, and if you have a blog, uh, you might find that the database gives you your next community or landmark that you'd like to feature. And finally, um, if you have your own virtual world spreadsheet or database, we would love to collaborate. So if you've been doing your own work um, that seems like it might mesh well with ours, please contact us. Uh, we're open to discussing integration uh, as well as partnerships, especially with collections that highlight the educational aspects of virtual worlds and the professional aspects. Um, and if you're interested in curating or helping with the database in any way, you please feel free to contact me or, or to contact Val. There is a box in our gazebo exhibit for the conference that has CVL's logo on it. And if you touch that box, you'll receive a, a note card with all of these uh, CVL volunteer opportunities and then, and then some uh, for both the database and in general, um, as well as our email addresses. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and then finally, um, please again feel free to check out the database. I have the link here. This slide gives a, uh, some instructions on how you might add things to the database. Uh, and I quote the average turnaround as about a week, depending on the semester and how many people I have helping out. It could be a little bit longer, um, but it is actively being looked at. I get an email every time somebody adds an entry, and there was actually one very recently. I was very happy to see that. Um, uh, so we are paying attention, we are looking, uh, and again, if you see something that is not right and you'd like us to correct it, please feel free to just shoot us an email uh, and we'd be happy to help with that. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Marie and she's going to talk about the Digital Citizenship Exhibit uh, and maybe a few other things as well for you. Okay, well, thanks, Elise. That was that was great. I'm trying to get the slide set up here. Very good. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and put down a copy of this um, this object that Elise talked about that has yes, it, it worked. So you can you if you can see this, this is the database form. If you click on it, you should be able to go directly to the database. Um, to to enter to enter any of the um, communities that you you would like.
So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to talk about the digital citizenship music exhibit, which um, was originally at CVL, and it, we're in the process of moving it to Kitely. Um, it, for CVL, it was a temporary exhibit, and uh, it was po so popular, and we feel also that the subject matter is so important that it made sense to, to, to do a permanent exhibit. So what we're doing is we actually have um, an island on its cookie in Kitely that will be just the digital museum and the the nice thing about it is, is we're taking each one of those um each one of those exhibits that we was in second life and we're giving it a building in the new museum so so that people who want to can do whatever they want in terms of the exhibit so they can put keep their slides in there but they can also add other objects that they would like that are um, associated with their exhibit so what you see here is just kind of an example of two of them that I put together for um, for demonstration purposes now we're hoping that this museum will be finished by mid to late January so that um, we can start having visitors and the other nice thing is that um, it's also going to still have lots of space for people who are interested in um, adding content so if there's anybody who is who'd be interested in putting up an exhibit related to digital citizenship, you can contact me and um, I will make a space for you to put up your exhibit. So this slide is just showing an example of a couple of exhibits that, um, that I put together for demonstration purposes. And you can see that in some cases, it's just some, some um, images that are go along on the wall. You can follow the, the presentation that way. And in, the, in, the, in other cases, there's some other objects like Mediana Prim and what have you that you can interact with. And um, that is, that's basically it for the Digital Citizenship Museum. Um, please feel free to ask any of us any questions. Also, um, go ahead and see if you can't get that form because we'd really like to um, get as many, in, in, as many entries into our database as we can. Thank you. <laughs> You know, Maria, I'm glad you mentioned that. While, while you guys are setting up the next set of slides, we had a couple of questions come in. And uh, one of them was, for these objects and for the content you're putting in there, will you be cataloging Creative Commons content? And do you, have any, do you need any help? That's from Lisa Laxton. That's a good question. Um, I'm going to give that to um, Val. Certainly, yes, we are cataloging Creative Commons licensed material where uh, we definitely want to advocate and be role models for digital citizenship and respect for intellectual property, certainly. Um, and so, yes, we, we are definitely open to volunteers. You do not have to be um, an information professional to help the community virtual library. Just as in the physical world, li libraries and librarians rely on volunteers to, to come in and help with all kinds of different projects. So you're welcome to contact any of the three of us. If anything we've talked about sounds of interest to you, working um, on exhibit displays we're going to have more space on our new land library land in Second Life on Cookie Island for exhibits art um, galleries pop-up exhibits and then also on Kitely as Marie was telling you about our digital citizenship exhibit that will cover all elements of digital citizenship from how to evaluate online content how to remain um, cyber safe um, cyber safety, um, also, um, you know, online identity protection, uh, privacy, and as you mentioned, respect for intellectual property, really anything that people need to understand as we now live most of the time in digital culture, uh, that's promoting digital citizenship. So um, if, you know, that really affects everybody. So there's a lot of different ways that you can help with the digital citizenship exhibit by bringing in um, various things that, that you work on in, in virtual worlds. So and, uh, and I also feel free to ask to, questions. And I also wanted to add to that, Val, that we're also, it's also di digital literacy too. So that's the whole, that whole idea of how you find, um, it, how you find the 
content that you need um, without it, it, and and put in incorporating it into your own work without plagiarize without plagiarism, and um, and making sure that it's actually um, good work. It's not it's not fake news. Right now, this next question and and it's uh, Lisa Laxton's question and delightful Duango has a spin off of it as well. Both of them are thinking about an external database. <laughs> And of course, uh, Delightful first says, is your uh, development effort aligned with the American Library Association, Association of Research Libraries, National Archives, or uh, or some other collection? Absolutely. We are, um, we are affiliated with the ACRL group of the American Library Association. We have librarians who convene the group. Um, it's the ACRL Association of College and Research Libraries. And we are um, a member interest group. We're called the Virtual World Interest Group. So we are definitely in collaboration with ALA. We also connect with um, colleagues really around the globe um, over with, as some of you may know, uh, Sheila Weber, who's an information literacy specialist in um, the UK. And we collaborate with her quite a bit as well. So we we really um, try to network with other um, librarians and with the information literacy standards as they have changed. They have changed to include meta literacy and that aligns well with virtual worlds. Well, that's great. So Lisa's spinoff question is, uh, is there any interest in integration with a separately maintained knowledge base? Um, we'll have to give that some thought, and um, Elise, you might even, Elise has kind of taken on the lead as far as our virtual world database, and we're open to this growing and to networking with others, and so I'm certain if we find, we've already found several um, professionals who have shared what they've gathered from, you know, from spreadsheets and from various um, collections, so we would be open to partnering, you know, with our virtual world database in any way, and Elise, feel free to add to that. Um, yeah, sure. I know for um, uh, on what you were just saying about people that have. I know. I believe I have a uh, one of one of my missions for my winter break from classes. I'll be graduating next semester, so it'll be my last official winter break. Um, is that uh, Beth Ghost Raven had actually. Uh, given us at one point a, a really great spreadsheet um, that I need to go through and add to the database. Um, and then um, as far as integrating, um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by integrated knowledge management um, other than, because I'm doing a lot with like digital asset management and stuff like that, but I'm not sure if if you're thinking along those lines or if it's something else that I'm not understanding for. Well, we could take that offline and for a further discussion after the session. We had another housekeeping question too. I don't mean to interrupt your slides by any oh, no. means, but I was giving you time to get set up for the third set. But um, uh, this comes from JJ Edenverse Drinkwater who says, how will landmarks be checked for currency? Is there a way not to have to check them by hand? Like, are, do you plan on using a bot or, or uh, some other method? For that, that's actually a really good question. There, That's a, a, a very difficult um, question also because I know that there's been a lot of research in preserving worlds where uh, bots don't always work due to various permissions issues. Right now, a lot of it just has to do with going in and checking uh, by hand. But we do have a section, at least on the back end, and it may be added to the front end as well at some point, where uh, I have a way of dating when it was last checked. So someone can go in at the very least and see, okay, so this was last checked a year ago, um, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the uh, various, but so, so that's something, it definitely requires a little bit more research into ways to do that. And that's something also where if we had some IT volunteers or folks that had experience using bots to check things, um, they could. Um, sometimes that costs some money, um, but that doesn't mean that we're opposed to applying for grants and that sort of thing. Um, I Thank hope that you. answers the question. <laughs> oh yeah, that's great, thanks. And uh, I'll turn it back over to you for the rest of your session.
Well, we will mention that, you know, as we said, we do rely heavily on our volunteers. We have a head reference librarian who trains them. And so that is one of the ways we have office hours. And it's if each person even just spends an hour, you know, in the, the community virtual library uh, once a week, just, you know, in the library, that gives a little time to look through the database, maybe check a landmark. Um, so that's one way is through our office hours. We rely on volunteers. We also have a library colleague who is researching artificial intelligence. So when you mentioned um, bots and the ability to use AI, um, it's, it's something that she might want to look into. She brought for one of our um, virtual world interest group meetings, she brought a robot avatar who was able to interact with the with the audience and she's definitely right at the edge of uh, learning about AI and what possible um, jobs that AI might be able to help with so you know that's a potential that we might look into to help us um, with this database because it's a real uh, important need that could be filled great thank you and uh, we had a comment come in from Gamisa saying that um, you could just use a script to do that you don't really need a bot just a script that goes around and checks. So, uh, so there's other options there too. Uh, over to you. Well, let's see. Were there any other questions that we missed in the the chat? Where we basically wanted to just make you all aware of the virtual world database, make you aware of the community virtual library, and hopefully you found that we are. Our main branch is in Second Life, but we are definitely moving to, to other grids. And I will put our website in the text chat. I mentioned it, but I'd like to put it in the text chat um, because if you um, follow our website, you'll, you'll see our grand opening tours and also find out some information about um, the call for proposals for our digital citizenship exhibit. We're going to be using um, collaborative tools for the digital citizenship exhibit. So if, if anyone, if that sounded in interested to anyone, you'll need to contact Marie Vans. She's going to be our lead curator for the digital citizenship exhibit. Yes, and I just put the put my email address in there. So if anybody is interested and would like to, um, you know, we could use uh, volunteers as well as people interested in just putting up putting up content in in the um, in the space so please feel free to contact me to um, to get involved well that's great so um, I oh it looks like we have another question from Connie what was the name of the person who had the list of educational sims? Oh, you're talking about Fleep Took. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Ah, we have one coming in from Sunbeam Magic who says, uh, for digital citizenship, will there be some type of passport or ID given out? I guess I'm not sure, Val, do you, do you? Um... Sure, I can mention uh, one thing about that. When I was a school librarian, we, um, my entire school was certified as a digital citizenship campus. Um, there is a great site, and Marie's familiar with this, um, the, um, there are sites where, where schools and children can be certified, you know, with passports for digital citizenship. And um, so we'll, we'll definitely look into that. There may be a way that we could we can create a, a passport for a for a virtual world digital citizen. And and is it is that meaning that that somebody has met the requirements of knowing what being a good di digital citizen is? Yes, and I know there are there are several different ways to go about doing that. Um, we, we could even embed that somewhere in our digital digital citizenship exhibit where there's certain key elements that you know with, with maybe someone has to master a certain uh a certain thing to actually a achieve their their passport maybe even at, and this will be a growing thing we don't plan for this to be just you know instant we'd like this 
to be a permanent exhibit that grows and we add on. And I could see possibly having um, various badges even that you could earn, a cybersecurity badge, a privacy badge, you know, or and, and the initial thing would just be your passport to go through or something. It could be a levelized, um, a levelized learning experience. Yes, and we and and we could we could uh, use some help with that too for people who know how to put a get together experiences like that. Thank you. Now we had two questions come in from Sun Tzu, and I tried to put them in the chat. The first one is: Do you find that people use digital libraries differently than real life libraries? And secondly, what things do you do with them to make them more effective? Um, I can take a, a little bit of, of this question, although um, uh, Val and Marie are, are, are actually a little bit more qualified than me. I, I'm happy to take at least part of it because I recently did, uh, uh, I was spoke at a conference on the subject where I was talking about four um, librarians at physical libraries versus um, introducing them to virtual world libraries um, and what the difference is and how they might be able to use virtual worlds. Um, in place of VR or as a way of practicing on VR. Um, and so I actually have a presentation um, that is downloadable through the Internet Librarian website that talks all about it. Um, but for some of them, having worked in public libraries before, um, being able to sit at a, at a reference desk is actually very similar. Um, currently, it's not as busy as it once was. And so that's where it's a little bit different. But there are other ways that it's very similar in terms of people being able to come in and ask you any questions question. Um, biggest difference being that it's a little bit more anonymous, uh, which can be a little scary sometimes, but you also have the ability to ban them if, if they are actually inappropriate. So that's one of those interesting differences. Uh, and then the content is uh, very different because we do have some books and we, we love to be able to link to um, places online like the, the Gutenberg uh, project. Um, however, it's also very different in that um, we have these sorts of efforts where we've taken communities as resources. We've realized that resources for a virtual library isn't necessarily books and the physical resources. It ends up being the communities that we're trying to serve um, just as much as giving them landmarks. It's also important for them to know. You know, this um, brings to mind another question. <laughs> um, you're, you're probably familiar in, with the educator resources like Merlot and, and uh, Maricopa Learning Exchange, where they, they uh, 10, 15 years ago, they tried to catalog learning objects and all kinds of resources for curriculum, right? And of course, we had the Educator Commons. Uh, Kay McLennan hosted it right before the conference began on Friday. And several of the educators who came, Bethany and others, we're asking, will there be an archive or something in your library that will make it easy for them to find educator content for hosting their classes or like, like uh, OERs, IERs, and then also uh, um, some, some information that is attached to that so they know how to use it? Yes, yes. I'll let um, Marie talk a little bit about the OR file files and the uh, IR files. But first, I wanted to mention that having worked in a library for over 25 years, I find amazing similarities in a virtual world library. Um, but there are also huge advantages. We can have live book discussions, you know, on a global scale. You can't do that, you know, in the physical world. Um, we can have research symposiums without the high cost of travel. Um, we can have live storytelling events. We recently partnered with Shawnee Library for the Dickens Project and brought people in for our research presentations on the Victorian era, doing that on a live scale. And that would be difficult to do in the physical world where you can actually go in, dress in the Victorian attire and you know, present your research all together you know, live. Um, also, we can help people find open access materials that are available that are very difficult for them to find because the internet is just so vast. And, and we can help them find that. And it's, uh, it's a one-on-one -on -one, um, service that it, it's just it's really difficult to do that in a in a physical library there's a lot of time wasted wandering here and there in physical space and here it's just you're right there immersed in it um, and as Elise said we in our main library we have a lot of links to open access materials 
links to uh, the Gutenberg, um, you know, books that that are um, copyright free. So there, there are just tremendous similarities to a physical world library. When you sit around together in a round table and discuss literature in a virtual world, it's very much like being in a, a physical world book group. So the similarities are quite amazing. And Marie, did you want to say anything about or files and archiving in that uh, in that way? Yeah, but before before I say that, uh, talk about that. What I wanted to point out was, um, you know, in in a more um, a more um, in a bigger view of what a digital library is. Um, I'm I'm not a librarian. I'm more I've, I've come from a research point of view. So I use digital libraries online all the time when I'm doing research, and and I find it a lot easier to find the things I need for my research online than if I go and walk into a library and and look for it. And and the reason why that is is because um, I I. I I feel like I have the skills that I that that are needed to pull down content from from the web and and these you know this is because where I work they subscribe to some of the major um, digital libraries so I don't have a problem getting the 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 materials that I need now if I was if I could walk into a library and get the same thing it's not going to be nearly as convenient for me because I I can just get it from my desk so. Sure. So, so I feel like, um, in that respect, digital libraries are way more convenient than, you know, brick and mortar libraries. Absolutely. You know, we had one more little question. We only have 15 seconds. So the question is, can people contribute uh, OERs and IERs to this educator uh, part of the database? That comes from Sally, by the way. Oh, I think yes. that would be great. We I would, would say, love that. Um, what you would have to do is, is just send us an email because you won't be able to easily submit it through our current spreadsheet. Um, but yeah, set, send an email to, to all three of us or, or one of us and yeah, we'll be able to um, uh, start looking into that because yeah, that's really helpful. Well, thank you, Elise Donovan Jones, Valerie Hill, and Marie Vons for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Now, following this session, the next session will begin at 5.30 p.m. in this keynote region, and it is entitled Libraries and Learning and Literacy. Oh, my! Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 17 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find the accompanying information on presentations to explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to our speakers and to the audience. Thank you.